What motivates you to work for a living? What are your motivations for wanting to be financially independent? Would you like to have $1 million or would you rather like to spend $1 million? Come to think of it, there is a huge gap between these two options. One is to be rich. The other one is to live rich. If you desire houses, automobiles, clothing, and watches that you have not worn yet, you don't really want it. You want to spend it. If your ultimate goal and response in life is to be at peace and be able to live a comfortable life for you and your loved ones, stay focused. In this video, I will show you how millionaires invest their money in next decade financial products that allow them to be rich and to live rich both at the same time. But before we get into this, I want to welcome you to Invested Knowledge. Knowledge is power, my friends, and the best thing that you can do is to invest in it. Knowledge is the future's currency, so don't forget to subscribe to this channel, smash that like button, and turn the notification bell on to be notified every time there's a new video uploaded. Leave a comment down below if you enjoyed it, and thank you very much for watching. 1. High Yield Savings Accounts A high yield online savings account pays you interest on your cash balance, and just like a savings account earnings pennies at your brick and mortar store, High yield online savings accounts are accessible vehicles for your cash. With fewer overhead costs, you can typically earn much higher interest rates at online banks. Plus, you can typically access the money by quickly transferring it to your primary bank or maybe even via an ATM. A savings account is a good vehicle for those who need to access cash in the near future. A high-yield savings account works well for risk-averse investors, and especially for those who need money in the short term and want to avoid the risk that they won't get their money back. You can browse Bankrate's list of best high-yield savings accounts for a top rate. Otherwise, banks and credit unions offer a savings account, though you may not get the best rate. 2. Short-Term Government Bond Funds Government bond funds or mutual funds, or EFTs, that invest in debt securities issued by the U.S. government and its agencies. Like short-term CDs, short-term government bond funds don't expose you to much risk if interest rates rise, as they're expected to do in 2022. The funds invested in U.S. government debt and mortgage-backed securities issued by government-sponsored enterprises such as Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac these government bond funds are well-suited for the low-risk investor. These funds can also be a good choice for beginning investors and those looking for cash flow. Government bond funds may work well for risk-averse investors, though some types of funds like long-term bond funds may fluctuate a lot more than short-term funds due to changes in the interest rate. You can buy bond funds at many online brokers, namely those that allow you to trade EFTs or mutual funds. Most brokers that offer EFTs allow you to buy and sell them at no commission. While mutual funds may require you to pay a commission or make a minimum purchase, though not always. 3. Certificates of Deposit Certificates of deposit, or CDs, are issued by banks and generally offer a higher interest rate than savings accounts. And short-term CDs may be better options when you expect rates to rise, allowing you to reinvest at higher rates when the CD matures. These federally insured time deposits have specific maturity dates that can range from several weeks to several years. Because these are time deposits, you cannot withdraw the money for a specified period of time without penalty. With a CD, the financial institution pays you interest at regular intervals, but once it matures, you get your original principal back plus any accrued interest. It pays to shop around online for the best rates. Because of their safety and higher payouts, CDs can be a good choice for retirees who don't need immediate income and are able to lock up their money for a little bit. A CD works well for risk-averse investors, especially those who need money at a specific time, and can tie up their cash in exchange for a bit more yield than they'd find on a savings account. 4. Short-Term Corporate Bond Funds Corporations sometimes raise money by issuing bonds to investors, and these can be packaged into bond funds that own bonds issued by potentially hundreds of corporations. Short-term bonds have an average maturity of one to five years, which makes them less susceptible to interest rate fluctuations than intermediate or long-term bonds. 
Corporate bond funds can be an excellent choice for investors looking for cash flow, such as retirees or those who want to reduce their overall portfolio risk but still earn a return. Short-term corporate bond funds can be good for risk-averse investors who want a bit more yield than government bond funds. 5. S&P 500 Index Funds If you want to achieve higher returns than more traditional banking products or bonds, a good alternative is an S&P 500 index fund. Though it does come with more volatility, the fund is based on about 500 of the largest American companies, meaning it comprises many of the most successful companies in the world. For example, Amazon and Berkshire Hathaway are two of the most prominent member companies in the index. Like nearly any fund, an S&P 500 index fund offers immediate diversification, allowing you to own a piece of all those companies. The fund includes companies from every industry, making it more resilient than many investments. Over time, the index has returned about 10% annually. These funds can be purchased with very low expense ratios, how much the management company charges to run the fund. And they're some of the best index funds. An S&P 500 index fund is an excellent choice for beginning investors because it provides broad, diversified exposure to the stock market. An S&P 500 index fund is a good choice for any stock investor looking for a diversified investment and who can stay invested for at least three to five years. 6. Value Stock Funds With the run-up in many stocks in the last couple of years potentially leading to significant overvaluation, many investors are wondering where they can put their investment dollars. Value stock funds may be a good option. These funds invest in value stocks, those that are more bargain priced than others in the market. Plus, value stocks tend to do better when interest rates are rising, as they're expected to in 2022. Many value stock funds also pay a dividend, so that's an additional attraction for many investors. Value stock funds are good for investors who are comfortable with the volatility associated with investing in stocks. Investors in stock funds need to have a longer-term investing horizon, too, at least three to five years to ride out any bumps in the market. 7. Rental Housing Rental housing can be a great investment if you have the willingness to manage your own properties. And with mortgage rates still near all-time lows, it could be a great time to finance the purchase of a new property. Though the unstable economy may make it harder to actually run it. To pursue this route, you'll have to select the right property, finance it, or buy it outright. Maintain it and deal with tenants. You can do very well if you make some smart purchases. However, you won't enjoy the ease of buying and selling your assets in a stock market with a click or a tap of your internet-enabled device. Worse, you might have to endure the occasional 3 a.m. call about a broken pipe. But if you hold your assets over time, gradually pay down your debt, and grow your rents, you'll likely have a powerful cash flow when it comes time to retire. Rental housing is a good investment for long-term investors who want to manage their own properties and generate regular cash flow. 8. Cryptocurrency Cryptocurrency is a kind of digital electronic-only currency that's intended to act as a medium of exchange. It has become a hot property in the last few years in particular as dollars have flown into the asset pushing up prices and drawing even more traders to the action. Bitcoin is the most widely available cryptocurrency, and its price fluctuates a lot, attracting many traders. For example, from a price below $10,000 a coin at the start of 2020, Bitcoin soared to around $30,000 at the start of 2021 and then doubled above the $6,000 thousand dollar mark before falling back but the start of 2022 was rough for cryptocurrency as traders increasingly sold their positions and most of the top cryptos declined sharply however many cryptocurrencies such as bitcoin are coming off all-time highs and it's not that unusual for them to fluctuate markedly before eventually rising further those who bought and held may still be sitting on some pretty nice gains despite these ups and downs Unlike other assets listed here, it's not backed by the FDIC or the money-generating power of either a government or a company. Its worth is determined solely by what traders will pay for it. Cryptocurrency is good for risk-seeking investors who wouldn't mind if their investment goes to zero in exchange for the potential of much higher returns. It's not a good choice for risk-averse investors or those who need any kind of safe investment. 
If you love similar content, don't forget to take a look at our other videos and stay tuned for future videos.